Printing with carved wood blocks has a long history. With the advent of the printing press, woodcuts began to be used in printed works. The stress of the screw press dictated many of the decisions made by the woodcarver, including which type of wood to use and how deep the cut should be. Hardwoods with tight grains were ideal for woodcuts, and boxwood or pearwood were preferred. These woods could stand up to the pressures of the printing press, and a well-carved, stable block could be used for centuries. Very little is known about who carved woodblocks for cheaply printed materials in early modern England. We do know that woodblocks were used over and over again, and often passed down when a printer retired. Popular blocks were often recarved when worn. They were also copied by rival printers. In November 2014, we set out to recreate the experience of making woodcuts to be used in our own printing project. Historic preservationist William Palmer explains the material we used for carving, walnut blocks to practice on, and boxwood blocks for the final woodcuts. Um, but you're going to notice that there's uh, a specific direction of the grain. And as the tree actually grows, that's, um, you know, the rings are coming out, but the grain is moving this way. The water moves up and down through here. And you can't really tell on boxwood, but there's also uh, metrolary rays going the other direction, pulling grain the other way. Um, and those you're not really going to notice affecting you in, in boxwood, but if you were carving oak, you'll find that those would be a harder spot. Boxwood should cut pretty smooth for you. It's a you know very tight grain material. It's uh, about uh, 20 years per half inch of uh, growth, um, and so because of that, it's very very dense. The, Walnut is fairly dense, but you'll notice that you can see these fine pores, yeah. which again, right from the, uh, the start, those will print. Um, but as you print it several times, it would actually take uh, you know this fine fine material out, um, and it'd be kind of a flat block at that point. So you could print with walnut; it would just take you a couple couple inkings before okay. it was good. Designs were likely often drawn directly onto the woodblocks to be carved. However, with a pre-drawn design, such as those we brought to our woodcarving session, our first task was to transfer our drawings accurately onto the woodblocks. Methods known to be used in the early modern period include pricking the design with holes and pouncing chalk through the pattern onto the block, and pasting an already printed or drawn image onto the block and carving through the paper. We employed a third method, the graphite method, whereby we covered the backs of our designs with a layer of graphite and traced our drawings on top of the blocks of wood, leaving a graphite reproduction of our images. Some scholars believe that only beveled knives were used in carving wood blocks. Existing blocks, however, seem to demonstrate a variety of tools used, including gouges and chisels. Will Palmer explains the use of such carving tools. So basically uh, what you're going to have is these blocks and you're going to want to cut out the white space because the black space is the only part that prints. And so what you want to keep in mind as you're uh, carving is kind of which direction through the grain you're going. You can make any curve or cut you want, um, but if you're using a carving tool like this, uh, where you're cutting just straight into the grain, um, you're going to find that it's going to start tearing the grain out. Um, and so kind of the way to avoid dealing with that is you can use kind of a skew chisel like this, uh, which just has kind of a flat blade uh, cut at an angle. And you can hold that and uh, kind of cut in your, your design before you start. And that will allow you to kind of cross the grain without that tear out. And then you're going to want to dig out around the edges of that up to your line. And then you're going to want to come back over your line and cut that out. And that'll allow you to not have the issue of kind of losing part of your image. Um, if you're using you know, a V-cutting tool like this, you can cut with the grain without a problem, and it'll, it'll make you a nice straight line. But as soon as you start going across the grain, it'll kind of tear out a small amount. Um, 
not so much with this walnut, but with the boxwood, it's a lot harder. Um, and so the, the, the you know, brittleness of the actual grain will pull apart. Um, so, well, how deep do we have to carve? Uh, you don't have to carve terribly deep. Um, I mean, the main problem is where the ink is going to build up, and so, you know, the more times you print, the thicker the ink kind of builds up in those fine grooves. Um, and so, you know, a, a depth such as that should actually print fine for a while, but eventually, I don't know how many prints you all are going to do, uh, that will fill in. So the, the deeper, the better, but I wouldn't worry about going more than, say, a, a quarter inch is more than enough okay. um, and a sixteenth inch is you know will print fine okay. uh, so a, a pretty fine fine depth so the different print. implements are what can you name them for us or uh, so you got us? like a, a skew chisel which is a flat chisel um, and in this case it's beveled on both sides okay. um, and then cut kind of a skew angle uh, you've got the V cutting tool which is pretty traditional for like uh, linoleum block cutting uh, where you'll just kind of cut around and it'll will make a V groove within that. Um, and that takes out a lot of material very quickly, so it's very easy to use in that way. Uh, whereas this, it, you know, you can mark a line and then you have to kind of dig out around up to it. Uh, and then you've got, you know, gouges, uh, kind of like this tool right here, uh, where you have a couple options. Either you can use it like the V cutting tool, or you can also follow a curve um, around. Like that um, and you can do the same sort of thing as you did with the skew chisel and you know cut up to your curve um, and you're going to want to kind of cut from one side and then you're going to want to take it from the other side and you'll actually get that curve out of there um, so okay so, and Indeed. that's for big spaces too, we can uh, just go. And yeah, if you want to take out a lot of material quickly, um, a, a gouge like this will take out material a lot faster than say this thin, okay. thin cutting tool will. Um, but even even your skew tool will pull out quite a lot of material quickly. Okay, so, so this is what, for those of you who couldn't see it, what he just did just right now on the, the walnut, um, but boxwood's gonna be harder, so. We found the carving difficult and labor intensive due to the hardness of the boxwood and our unfamiliarity with the tools. I think we could do, but it would be hard. Oh, wait, then the eyes are black. Please. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yes. We got higher points back here, yeah. and so you're probably going to want to start back in that area and start pulling back, go all the way through, and then bring this whole thing down. Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, we persevered. And after about five hours of work, we had six usable woodcuts for our ballad. This is not to say that all of our efforts were rewarded. We encountered a number of problems during our experiment with carving. First, what do we carve away? Some of us carved away the negative space of our images, leaving the raised portions to be inked for printing. Others carved away the design itself, so that the image would print in the negative. Either way, deciding what to carve often proved confusing. We're having a little problem. But Your this other is option lady. is to let her head be the opposite of his, which might be great with the skull and like a human person, like the, the difference. And so instead of carving out the background of her face, carve out her eyes and her mouth, and then her skin would be the imprint, which actually might make her look more alive than the skeleton. Other problems arose with improperly reversed images. Because an image prints in reverse, we had to flip any readable symbols, such as letters or musical notes, so that they would be readable when printed. This is my beautiful woodblock that is absolutely useless um, because it is not an image reversal of the music notes. 
when these print, they're going to print backwards. Backwards, my hand motions. Um, so I had originally made my drawing, is this right? Backwards. Mm -hmm. And I was going to carve it onto the wood like that. And then we all got very confused when we were talking about how to transfer the graphite onto the wood. And the suggestion was for the complicated drawings to just flip this over and rub the graphite onto the wood as if it were a carbon copy and carve that. And I realized if I did it that way, my image reversal would not stay. So instead, I just drew it onto the, onto the wood, or I, I switched the reversal so that I could do that. And in the process, the image reverse got reversed again. That, this, doesn't make, this doesn't make any sense, but it's not right is the moral of the story. Because it's going to get reversed one more time. Because it's going to get perfect. reversed one more time, yes. <laughs> Finally, it is easy to accidentally carve away too much and remove pieces you intended to leave intact, as Dr. Carl Stamer can attest. What happened is I just put, I was trying to carve out a space between the eye and the eyebrow, and in putting that kind of pressure to move it away from the eye, it popped the eyebrow on the other, on the other side. So she will not have eyebrows. Regardless of the difficulties of our efforts, our experience was both entertaining and illuminating. Early modern ballad woodcuts have often been considered crude and unartistic. However, this experience has given us a new appreciation of the intricacies of even the simplest designs and the level of craftsmanship necessary to produce a pleasing and recognizable image. Their ubiquity on early modern ballads is a testament to their past popularity, and our endeavors to recreate them have reinvigorated our passion for them.